Yep. Next up, Anderson Silva wins a split decision in his uh, boxing match against um, <laughs> Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., who just... Man, this guy can't get out of his own way. But uh, Anderson Silva looked really good, I thought. Uh, I got a split decision. I thought it was probably uh, a unanimous. It should have been a unanimous decision. I thought Anderson Silva outclassed him all night. But what would you think of that one? First of all, congratulations to Silva. A real gentleman, a real class act. You can't always say that Chavez Jr. is quite a class act. I'm not trying to knock him. But first of all, Silva, a real class act iconic one of the greatest mma fighters if not the greatest if not the greatest some people could say he's the greatest and you probably wouldn't get too many arguments um but one of the greatest mf fight mma fighters of all time and he goes into a different sport uh into boxing even though he's a good striker but still he goes into boxing and he beats a former world champion congratulations to him tremendous and now let me say something about Chavez. First off, Chavez Jr., why is someone still paying him? And why is anyone watching him? And I don't like to knock him, but sometimes you have to. Why is anyone knocking him anymore? You know, he's destroying the great name of his father to a certain extent. He's made millions, millions, yeah, millions. He's made millions off of his name. And listen, I'll give him credit that, yes, you know, he's won some fights against some good fighters, and he won a title. I'll give you all that. But that was a long time ago. And now in the last years in his career, he's come in overweight many times, Ken. He's tested dirty for drugs many times. He has quit in fights. It's a joke. Um, really. I mean, you know, he he's like a spoiled kid who keeps getting... What he wants, no matter how bad he is, he parties, he, he parties, he, I think it's pretty much public knowledge that he likes to party, comes in overweight, smokes weed and stuff, that's fine if that's what you're, but not if you're fighting. Not if you're fighting, not if you're having people trust you and say, I'm going to pay to watch you, I'm going to pay for pay-per-view, that's not cool, that's not cool, um, he comes in heavy all the time. He doesn't care. Why should we care, Ken? I needed to say it the right way, the honest way. Why should we care? I didn't come here. I didn't say last week I'm going to knock uh, Jose. Uh, uh, I'm going to knock uh, Chavez Jr. But but he deserves it. He deserves it. You know, Silva, who's a legendary, as I said, MMA fighter, he beat him. Um, He's not a he's not a boxer, but he beat him, uh, and it, it wasn't a great fight. But Silver won mostly because he cared more. He cared more than Chavez did. Ken, he cared more. He cared more. Obviously, he came in shape. He came ready. He did his proper preparation. Um, Chavez stood in front. He pressed the fight, but Silver. He, did, he didn't do anything. He stood in front most a lot of rounds, doing nothing. Um, Silva moved a lot with his legs early on, especially uh, on the outside. Moved nicely on his legs. Hey, he's got good legs, even at his age. Um, he did more than Chavez, who didn't throw much. And when he did, he threw one punch at a time. You know, like I said, I'm happy for Silva, who, again, we say the truth here. He's basically a shot fighter in the MMA. He, he went beyond his time. And it broke my heart. I did a piece on him. People could look it up on our podcast. Uh, it's in the archives, talking about him. One of the old lions. And, and just broke my heart to see him getting beat by guys that he would have beat five years ago. Taking nothing away from the guys that beat him, but getting knocked out. Uh <laughs> By, by guys that he would have had his way with five years ago. It, it broke my heart to see, just the same as it broke my heart to see Muhammad Ali, you know, getting in there with Holmes or, or, or whoever at the end when it wasn't Ali anymore. Or it broke my heart to see Joe Lewis when I watched the tapes of him in there with Marciano. Great Marciano, great. Marciano's great. But that Joe Lewis wasn't Joe Lewis. That wasn't Joe Lewis that he, that he knocked out. And these guys stayed too long. And sometimes. And to see Silver stay the great Silver, the great Silver, the greatest of all time, to see him stay too long in MMA, it was sad. It was it was sad. And he shouldn't have been fighting anymore. But 
he gets a reward here. It's nice. It's nice. It's nice. Nobody deserves it more. It's beautiful. That's the one good thing about it. That that he he got a he got something, you know, for being a good person and for being a great champion. He got a nice reward. He beat a former champion, albeit albeit all the things I just said negative about Chavez, but he still he went into a different sport. He won. He gets that. He deserves it. I'm happy for him. Uh, I was thinking, you know, Ken, it must have been nice for him who, you know, he's been knocked out, Silver, and he, he's fought way past, he's in his 40s, he's fought way past his, his prime, but it must have been nice to put on 10-ounce gloves and not those freaking 4-ounce uh, things that are basically bare fists bare knuckle uh, that he's getting hit with in the MMA and to go in there it must have felt like uh, sleeping on a nice uh, pillow. <laughs> it must, uh, for him, for that warrior, and he's a warrior, my God. For that warrior, what a what a gift it must have been to say, oh, I can wear 10 ounce? Wow. I mean, Jesus. I, I'm used to basically fighting with bare knuckles almost. And uh, wow, wow. He must have been like, gee, uh, this is like, this is like kitty stuff, <laughs> you know, in his mind. You know, he must have been like, well, what's the name of that golf where you take the kids uh, with the windmills? Mini miniature golf or putt-putt? Yeah, 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 putt-putt. It's like going to putt-putt. It's mm -hmm. like going to miniature golf. He must have said, oh, my goodness, you're giving me 10-ounce gloves? Wow. I mean, this is, this, is, this is unbelievable. So anyway, he went in there. He upsets, he beats Chavez. What can I say? I just, I don't know why anybody would would pay Chavez uh, Jr. And listen, Chavez Sr. is one of the greatest fighters of all time. He's one of the greatest, if not the greatest, Mexican fighters uh, of all time. Uh, you know, you talk about the greatest Mexican fighters of, of all time. I mean, this... There's so many great ones, but Chavez's name is always either at or near the top of the list, uh, Chavez Sr. So I could only imagine how his father must have felt. <laughs> Which is what I was going to say. Chavez G Sr. was in action um, in the main event against uh, Hector Camacho Jr. Chavez, 58 years old, will be 59 in one month on July 12th. Um, I don't know. Did you get a chance to see that one? And if so, what'd you think? No, I didn't see it, but I don't have to. <laughs> I, I, I don't you have don't to. You want to watch 58-year-old guys fight? Listen, 58, I, I love Chavez Sr. I love him. I love him. He's a great, great fighter. I said it already. Um, Mickey Duff, the great Mickey Duff, who's not with us anymore, he he was one of the greatest boxing minds of all time, great promoter, ran everything in London for years. Uh, he was very witty. He would always come up with these sayings. He would have called this fight a has-been versus a never-was. <laughs> <laughs>